Cut deep my share in the furrows red. Ploughs may not spare the bones of the dead. With creak of leather and rattle of chain, onward the tugging horses strain. In their fate-like tread with the cleaving plough, for men must have bread in the world of now. The world of then is under the sod, with its fleshless laws and its mouldered God. I must open the field to the sun and rain, before it can yield its tithe of grain. And as my stone blade shoulders through, what if it turn up a bone or two? From the dark repose where the dead folk lie, shall flame the rose and billow the rye. Hi guys, it's me Adam Garrett and welcome back to the channel where you can watch me make you some delicious food. Ah, the ploughman's lunch, eh? Who doesn't love a good ploughman? Now I did kind of have second thoughts about making this video because I thought surely people aren't going to want to watch me put some bread and cheese on a plate and pass that off as a video. But the more I thought about it I thought I actually need to make this video because it kind of reminded me of a really bad experience that I had with a ploughman's lunch. Now some of you might be thinking what with bad experience ploughmans get over it but as a foodie and all you foodies out there will appreciate that we love our food and when we eat stuff we want a good experience and when it's bad it sticks with you and i was out with my sister and my niece i'm not going to name the place all right i'm not going to badmouth them but we had some lunch there and i ordered the ploughmans and it was atrocious it was the worst ploughman's lunch i'd ever had in my life it was disgusting and i didn't let on i just thought oh, i'll eat it you know it's food i don't want to waste it but the cheese was mediocre, it was like the most boring beige mild cheddar you could get from any supermarket, there was no flavour to it. The cheapest naffis ham, right, I wouldn't even feed it to a dog, let alone a human being, it was just the worst, it had bits of gristle in it, it was awful. <laughs> just some eggs, right, that had been boiled for so long and either left in the fridge for about 600 million years, that they've got this grey horrible ring out around the outside. They smelt like farts, it was disgusting, all right? It's just the worst. And I just thought to myself, do you know what? For someone perhaps coming into this country on a visit, you know, on holiday, and they thought, oh, they want to experience some British culture and some food, they might stumble across that ploughman's and think that that's how it should be and go, well, that's not very good ploughman's, is it? I didn't like that at all. And this is the problem. This is the problem in this country, and we do it all the time, is we mess our own food up big time all right and this is why the world thinks that british food is rubbish and it isn't it's good stuff so i figured i needed to make this video for two reasons firstly to show all the restaurants and eateries out there this is how you should make a ploughman's not the crap that you keep peddling out and charging people a fortune for and the second reason is for those of you who you know from another country or even this country and you don't know how to make a ploughman's and you want kind of a good guide on how to assemble one yourself this is how you do it. Now the thing with this as well is there's no written rules as such, okay? You can switch out ingredients, you can put what you like on there, but there are some basic principles that you need to follow. Now before we get started, you know, if you're not interested in the history of food, you know, you don't like me talking too much and explaining things, you know, go and watch something else, right? Because this is going to be quite an in-depth, you know, quite well-explained video. But if you're going to stick around, get your face down here and I'm going to show you how to make a really good Plowman's lunch. Right, so I've got my products and ingredients here that I'm going to use for my ploughman's. Like I said before, there's no strict rules as to what you put in a ploughman's, but there are some founding principles. Now, a quick history lesson for you, the ploughman's lunch can be traced back hundreds of years. We as a nation have been eating bread, cheese and onion for centuries, washing it down with a good glug of ale. This was poor man's food, this is how it started out. You can visit any pub in England and that's what you would get, alright? There's none of this gastro pub stuff that we've got now. That was very basic, it was hearty, it was wholesome, and it filled you up. But the Plowman's Lunch became much more popular during the 1950s, when the Cheese Bureau, yes, we had a Cheese Bureau, and they began to promote the Plowman's Lunch in order to increase sales of cheese. Because after the war, it was not on ration anymore, and they needed the sales. Now to me, the modern day Plowman's Lunch isn't about just a bit of bread and cheese. I think it's about showing off good local produce in whatever part of the country you live. So with me being a Leicester lad, 
I've got Leicester products. So what I'm going to do now is get all of this out of its packaging, do some slicing, do some chopping, we'll assemble it on this board and then I'll go through it all and explain to you how you can make a banging ploughman's lunch. Oh, come on, come on, hey? Woo, that is a handsome plate of food. Well, border food. Kind of reminds me of like a feast from Game of Thrones. Like I'm in a castle feasting on some nice food whilst I get my minions to do my bidding. So I've assembled it, I've made it look pretty. You know, you can display it however you like. But I'm gonna show you everything we've got and why. Now the cheese and meat ratio is three and three. I've got three cheeses, three different kinds of meat. I think that's a nice, good balance. So I've got my meats here. I've got a really nice Leicester made pork pie. I've got some nice cured Leicestershire ham, and then I've got some brawn. Now you don't have to use that. You can use another kind of local meat. It's entirely up to you. Brawn is really nice. It's cheap and it's really super tasty as well. It's got a very sweet uh, kind of pork flavor. It's very savory and it's gonna really complement all the other stuff as well. And then I've got a locally made farmhouse pickle, which is gonna go really well with these cheeses, which we'll get to in a minute. And then I've got some tomatoes here on the vine. Uh, and they're going to provide sweetness, okay? Because you've got a lot of rich, dense meat here and that sweetness is just going to help cut through that. Got some bread as well. We've got some salted butter here, which all I've done with that is just taking a potato peeler, run it over the butter so you've got some nice curls, which will just make it easier to spread. And now onto the cheeses. Now, I do suggest you use hard cheeses. I think soft cheeses don't tend to work so well with the ploughmans. Now, I'm a Leicester lad, so I've gone for local Leicester cheeses. Now, I've got a cheese here that's made in Rutland. It's kind of similar to a red Leicester. It's got a nutty flavour, but it's also quite sweet as well. And then here I've got a vintage red Leicester. This is called uh, Spark and Ho. Uh, you can see it's got a slight bit of blue running through it. And this is a very traditional red Leicester. Um, a lot of the red Leicesters that you get in supermarkets are just not the same and they're just pale in comparison to the real stuff. The next cheese I've got is a blue cheese called Long Clawson Stilton. Long Clawson is a Leicestershire village. I think it's out near Melton Mowbray, but the Stilton will provide bitterness but also creaminess as well. We've got some tartness from the pickled onions and here we've got some celery which provides crunch but also it's a bit of a palate cleanser because um, you've got a lot going on here. You've got lots of rich cheese, you've got the meats, um, so by adding a bit of celery, you can eat a bit of that and it's just gonna kind of clean your mouth out a bit so you can taste everything else. And then in the center here, we've got apple, which provides sweetness, which is gonna really help complement the cheeses and the meats as well. So it's a very, very balanced ploughman's, okay? But again, like I said before, it depends where you live in the country as to what cheeses and meats you use. Support your local producers, go to your farmer's markets, and go and buy those locally made products because it's gonna make your ploughman's spectacular. Yes, you can go to the supermarket and buy most of this, but is it gonna be as good? I guarantee you, no, it isn't. Another bit of important information is when you assemble your ploughman, you want to make sure that your cheese is at room temperature. Don't serve it cold because it just ruins the flavour. Just let it sit on the side, cover it with a bit of kitchen paper or a clean tea towel and just gently bring that up to room temperature and it's going to make your ploughman that much better. Now, you can't have a ploughman's lunch without some booze, all right? Now, depending on where you live, you could have cider if you're living down in Dorset. You have cider if you live up in Scotland, it don't matter really. You could also have ale, but in this case I've got a nice meaty stout, because I'm Wellard. Ah, well there we are folks, that's my video on how to assemble a ploughman's lunch. Now for all of you out there that have never had a ploughman's lunch, if you come across any naff ones, all right, tell me, all right, name and shame. Get on that trip advisor, all right? we will not accept it. All right? No to bad ploughman's lunches. I need to get off my freaking soapbox, don't I? Christ's sake, it's cheese and bread. But really, in all seriousness, you apply these principles, you're gonna get a good ploughman's lunch. Well guys, that wraps up today's video. Thanks for watching, thanks for putting up with me. If you enjoyed the video, leave a comment down below, share it across your social media platforms. And as always, if you stick around at the end, there'll be some links to some other videos. And there'll be my fizzog on there as well, where you can subscribe. And if you do, you know, make sure you click the little bell icon, allow all notifications. That way you'll get notified every time I upload. Now I'll leave you guys in peace. I'm gonna go eat all of this and I'll see your faces next time for more tasty fun and frolics. And bye for now. That is a lot of cheese, isn't it, Mugs? Hmm? You share some with me, even though you're supposed to be on a diet. You fat loaf.